In this video, we're going to cover the simple logic for double clicking and use it to trigger a special dash. Let's begin. Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. So here is what we want to create. I have my player character in here, and I can click somewhere in the world and tell him to move, and there you go, he's moving there. However, I am also testing for double clicks in order to do a different special action. So when I double click, there you go, he starts moving and does a nice dash. So a simple click does one action, and a double click does a special different action. All right, that's the goal, let's get to it. Okay, so here's our starting scene. We simply have the player sitting around idle. There's no input, okay. So let's start off by making a simple script. So in here, a new C-sharp script. This will be our testing code. Let's create a testing game object and drag the script onto it, okay? Now in here, let's make a private void update and let's capture our mouse clicks. So we do it if, go into the input and get the mouse button down. This function returns true on the very first frame that we press on the mouse button. So in here we require an index for the mouse button. The left mouse button is on index 0 and the right one on index 1. So in this case, let's test for the left mouse button, so we pass in a 0. So the code in here will be triggered exactly once when I press on the mouse button. So let's just do a simple debug.log and say click. Okay, let's see. Okay, here we are with the console and when I press the left mouse button, yep, there you go, there's our click debug.log. Okay, so that's how we capture a simple mouse click. Now let's go back into the code. And here, in order to make this more fun, let's make our character move whenever we click. So for that, let's add a reference for our player script. So a, a serialized field for a private player reference. Here in the editor, you can see the field, so we just drag the player onto it, okay? Now when we click, we can go into the player and call the move to function, which will move him towards a target position. So let's call it with the mouse world position. For that, we can grab it from a function in the utilities. As always, you can download the utilities for free from unitycodemonkey.com. So with this, when we press the left mouse button, we should be able to tell the player character to move to the mouse world position. Let's see. So here we are, and when I press the left mouse button, yep, there you go, he starts moving to that position, he gets there and stops. Okay, great. So we have a very simple click being captured. Now that we have that, let's think about exactly what a double click entails. So in essence, a double click is essentially two clicks that are in very quick succession. So that means when we click, we need to know how long ago the last click was. So here in the code, let's store the time that we last clicked. So up here, make a private float for the last click time. So this will store the time when we last clicked. So in order to store that, we go in here into our click and we set the last click time to be time.time. .time. This contains the number of seconds since the start of the game. Okay, so let's test and see exactly what is stored in this variable. So for that, instead of doing a debug.log, let's do a cm debug, which again, part of the CodeMonkey utilities, just to spawn a very nice text pop-up. And in that pop-up, we say the last click time, and then we pass in the time, okay. So let's test and see what the pop-up says. Here we are, now when I click on the mouse button, there you go, the last click was at 2.6 seconds, now I'll click again, and now it says it was at 6.3, 7.7, and so on. So as you can see, we are correctly storing the time when the last click happened. So since we have the current time whenever we click, we can easily calculate the difference between the current time and the previous time. So in here, all we need is to do time.time .time minus the last click time. So this is essentially the time in between clicks. Now obviously we calculate this before we set the last click time. And let's see the pop-up. Okay, here we are, now let's click, and it should be the difference between the start of the game testing. So we click, and there you go, six seconds, okay. Now click again, 
Now it's only been two seconds since the last click and two seconds and so on. Okay, so now we can use this to check which one is the correct value for testing for double clicks. So let's say if I click twice real quickly, and there you go, the second one said 0.13. So double click, yeah, it's around 0.1 seconds. So if we give it a little bit more, let's make it 0.2. So if we click within 0.2 seconds, we consider that a double click. All right, let's see. So in here we can make a private cons float for the double click time, which will be 0.2 seconds. And then in here, it's extremely simple to do our logic. All we need is to test if the time since the last click is less than or equal to the double click time, then this is a double click. And if it's not, then we have a normal click. Okay, let's do some pop-ups. So let's see. Here we are, let's do a normal click. There it is, now we double click. And there you go, the first one is normal and the second one is double. Okay, so that's pretty much it. We have our logic fully working. Now we already have the player moving to our click position. Now let's add a special dash when we have a double click. So here in the code, when it's a normal click, we tell the player to move to that position. And when it's a double click, the player also has another function for the dash two. And we dash towards the mouse position, so we pass in the same mouse world position. Okay, so when we click, we move, when we double click, we dash. And that's pretty much it. As you can see, the player logic is completely separated from our input code. So here we are, let's move here, okay. Now go in here and do a double click, and there you go. He starts moving and then does a nice dash every time I do a double click. So I can move the player around and everything works exactly as intended. So just like that, we can now capture single clicks to make a certain action and then also check for double clicks to make a special action. And that's it. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials. Post any questions you have in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Alright, see you next time.